This is the underworld of the Karst River Ljubljanica, the river of seven names. The underground river which created beautiful Karst caves, including the famous Postojna Planina cave system. I started diving 40 years ago. I swam through my first siphon in the Postojna cave system in 1982. It was a drainage siphon in Puka Cave. Since then, I've visited a number of European caves and swam through many of their siphons. Some of them were really magnificent, but I felt there was something missing. It was not until much later that I realized what I was really missing. The living world, of course. Aquatic cave animals. When compared to the underground Karst River Ljubljanica, those siphons seemed empty. But here in the underground Puka, there is an explosion of living creatures. Of course, how could it be otherwise? After all, this is the heart of the caves which have some of the greatest subterranean biodiversity in the whole world, with hundreds of different species of cave animals living in a single cave system. Most of them are aquatic cave fauna. To the outside world, this may not seem like much, but in the underground world, according to the data available, this is more than anywhere else in the world. In other words, this is a hotspot of cave biodiversity. This great wealth of species often fills us with pride, but at the same time we are not fully aware of the great responsibility that comes with it, which is the responsibility to preserve this diverse cave ecosystem. When swimming through underground tunnels with hundreds and hundreds of meters of solid rock above me, I feel very safe. The cave seems like an invincible fortress and as safe as a nuclear shelter. But the reality is far from that. Each cast cave that has water flowing through it is actually very vulnerable. The animals that live in it are directly dependent on the quality of the water flowing underground. It flows from the surface, that is from us. It is often highly contaminated and unsuitable for life, let alone for drinking. Therefore, sensitive species living in the caves are constantly in danger, especially in times of drought, when the water is low and the concentration of toxic substances is higher. The blind cave salamander, Proteus anguinus, the largest cave animal in the world and the only cave-dwelling vertebrate in Europe, with its high metabolism, minimum energy consumption, and ability to survive without food for years, it could serve as an ideal model for the human of the future. Ever since I first met this interesting creature, it just keeps coming back into my life and I keep returning to its caves. We often came across each other, including during some of my milestones. For example, 30 years ago, when I was the first to capture it on film, or later when I discovered Proteus in places that it had never been seen before. Among other places, in a Dalmatian spring, which is today known as the southern limit of its range. I was on the trail of the biggest examples of Proteus, but I also found the smallest specimen, only 42 millimeters long. I've observed them under infrared and ultraviolet light. That is how I've spent countless hours in their cold darkness, probably more than anyone else. And then one day, an unexpected meeting occurred. Already at first glance, I could see that it was something special. It was bigger and stronger than other specimens. When I turned on the strong light, it did not swim away, which is what they typically do, but it continued to move slowly in its shelter. 
Next to the black patch of pigment, I could see a white egg through the skin. The Proteus was pregnant. Fascinated by this extraordinary event, I kept staring and filming the animal. Ever since researchers have been studying it, they've tried in vain to find a Proteus in this condition. I was honored to be the first human to see a pregnant one. Ironically, the dirty water that people send underground sooner or later returns to our underground pumping stations and back into our glasses. This is definitely one issue that we are not sufficiently aware of. And just as Proteus depends on us, we depend on its clean water. Or in other words, we depend on whether we can keep the water clean or not. And now let us leave Proteus to take care of its young. Hopefully it will be all right, also with our help.